Hi everyone, it's Michael. So I have a very elegant problem for you guys today. Uh, this one was posted on the Art of Problem Solving Forum by the user Kutrapali, and he said he created it himself, or herself. So thanks a lot for posting the problem, and if you'd like to try to solve it, feel free to pause the video. Alright, so I'm going to go over the solution. So A, B, B, E, and C, F are the three altitudes of a triangle A, B, C. Um, and then if you draw the circle with diameter A, C, uh, D, E intersects that circle at point P. And if you draw the circle with diameter A, B, D, F intersects that circle at point Q. And if M is the midpoint of B, C, we want to show that M, P is equal to M, Q. So first I'm going to note... Um, the circle with diameter AC, it's very apparent that, ha that it has to pass through points F and D because AFC is equal to ADC is 90 degrees. So I didn't even write that as a step here, um, but it's fairly clear to see that. And similarly, the circle with diameter AB has to pass through points E and B. Okay, so where do we go from here? Um, well, since we have two diameters, it's, it's helpful to draw in the centers of those two circles. So I'm going to do that right now. So G is the midpoint of AB, so it's the center of that circle with diameter AB. And H is the midpoint of AC. So where do we go from here? Um, so for the rest of the solution, I drew sort of my inspiration from video number 23 on my channel. So if you want, you can check that out. But my plan is I'm going to show that triangle MGQ is congruent to triangle MHP. Um, so that would mean basically that MG I want to show is equal to HP and GQ I want to show is equal to HM. And um, yeah, so this may kind of seem like it comes out of nowhere. But like I said, that the problem um, in num video 23 on my channel is kind of my motivation here. Um, Okay, so it's fairly easy to see that GM has to be half of AC since G is the midpoint of AB and M is the midpoint of BC. So I'm going to write that out. So uh, G is the midpoint of AB because it's the center of that circle and M is the midpoint of BC by definition. And so therefore GM is a mid segment in triangle ABC. And so GM is half of AC. And then by the same logic, HM has to be half of AB, right? So, um, so basically, in those two triangles that I mentioned, uh, QGM and PHM, uh, we found uh, two of the segments. But then it's easy to see that GQ and PH have to equal those two segments also, because GQ is a radius of the circle uh, with center G. And so GQ um, has to be half of AB, um, so it has to equal HM. So I'm going to write this out. So, so GQ is half of AB um, because it's a radius of that circle. And, and HP is also half of AC. So we're almost there. We know that uh, from this that GM is equal to HP. And we know that GQ is equal to HM. Uh, so we have to show that uh, angle QGM is equal to angle PHM in order to solve the problem. Um, because that would show those two triangles are congruent. Okay. So how do we do that? Um, well, we can take to calculate angle QGM, we can break it up into angle QGA plus angle AGM. Um, so an angle QGA uh, has to be half, or actually it has to be double angle QDA. Um, but if you've seen my video on Blanchett's theorem, angle QDA, which is the same as angle FDA, that has to be the same as angle EDA, which is angle PDA. Uh, so I'm going to write some of this out. Um, but actually, before I do that, I'm going to draw in these segments that I just mentioned, GM, HM, GQ, and HP. And so we want to show triangle QGM is congruent to PHM. Okay. And now I'm going to do that angle chase I mentioned. But before I do that, note that AGMH has to be a parallelogram. 
And that's pretty clear because GM is a mid-segment in triangle ABC, so GM has to be parallel to AC, and then HM similarly has to be parallel to AB, and so AGMH is a parallelogram. Okay, and now um, angle Q, now I'm going to do the angle chase I mentioned. So angle QGA, it's equal to twice angle QDA um, because it's a central angle in, in the circle with diameter AB. Um, but then by Blanchett's theorem, angle QDA is equal to angle PDA. So you can see video number 17 on my channel, but it's actually, you don't even really need Blanchett's theorem to prove it. It, it does prove it, but in a way it's somewhat overkill and it's not too hard to show that these two angles are equal uh, without using it. Um, instead you can just sort of use some cyclic quadrilaterals and get there. So if you're interested I'll, I'll leave it to you um, to try the calculation. But angle QDA is equal to angle PDA uh, which is equal to um, and then two times angle PDA is equal to angle PHA because uh, that's a central angle in that quadrilateral. And so we have QGA is equal to angle PHA. And from there, it's not hard to see that angle QGM has to equal angle PHM. So I'm going to write this out. But angle QGM, it's equal to angle QGA plus AGM. And we just said that QGA is equal to PHA. So we can substitute QGA with PHA. We can substitute AGM with AHM because opposite angles in a parallelogram are equal. And so then we have PHA plus angle HAM, and that's just angle PHM. So we have the, the two angles that we want are equal, uh, QGM and PHM. And so therefore, by side angle side, those two triangles have to be equal. Um, so I'm going to write this out. So by side angle side, triangle QGM has to be congruent to triangle PHM. And that means that MP has to equal MQ, which solves the problem. So this is a fun one. Um, there's actually another way to prove it using congruent triangles. Um, so if you want, you can see that in the link um, in the description of my video, where you can see um, the solutions of other posters on the Art Problem Solving Forum. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more like this, uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Uh, thanks, everyone.